Hello, I'm Eric Williams with BHI Energy and I want to thank you for tuning in. The title of our presentation today is Weld Metal Overlay 101. There are several different uses for weld metal overlay, but today we're going to focus primarily on automated GMAW or the MIG process for pressure vessels in the oil and gas industry. During this program, we'll discuss the different types of weld metal overlay, their application, and the fundamentals necessary for a quality installation. Let's get started. Automated MIG overlay has its roots in the pulp and paper industry of the mid-1980s. Prior to this time, a cumbersome, submerged arc process was used to install stainless steel overlays in batch digesters. Batch digesters are cyclical vessels that are used to convert wood chips into pulp for the manufacture of paper products. While the sub-arc process was effective, it was limited in that it required a larger 360 degree band to be installed, when a smaller area or patch might be all that was needed. Also, the sub-arc process is slow, down times are longer, and because of the heat input generated, the process is limited to the heavier wall thicknesses found in these digesters. All these factors combine to rule out the use of the sub-arc process for the repair of thinner wall vessels. As interest in the automated MIG process grew, it was soon discovered that the lower heat inputs and portability of the equipment made it an excellent candidate for use in the oil and gas industry. By the early 1990s, automated MIG overlays were routinely being used as an alternative to the failed strip lining that for many years had been considered the only option available for large areas of vessel wall. Slowly but surely, much of this strip lining has been replaced over the years with corrosion resistant overlays. Now that we've discussed the origin of weld overlay, Let's speak about some of the terminology that's in use today and clarify the differences. Currently, the term weld overlay is used to describe three popular applications. They are corrosion resistant overlay, weld metal buildup, and structural weld overlay. However, only one of these applications is a weld overlay. It's easy to lump these three terms into the same category since the equipment and method of execution is so similar, but they each have their use and there are some distinct differences. Weld metal overlay refers to a protective barrier against erosion or corrosion. This typically involves the installation of an improved alloy welded over an existing base metal that is still above minimum thickness. This one layer application of weld overlay is strictly for protection and the overlay thickness cannot be considered part of the pressure boundary. An example of this would be the one layer installation of an alloy 317 overlay in a carbon steel distillation column. Second on the list is weld metal buildup. Weld metal buildup is used to restore the base metal thickness to a tower, column, or drum that is below T-min. The buildup material can match the base material or an improved alloy can be used, but the correct weld procedure and procedure qualification report must be used to count the buildup as part of the pressure boundary. An example of this could be a vessel suffering from corrosion under insulation. Often, on the outside of a carbon steel vessel, in the areas around the stiffener rings or insulation supports, moisture will accumulate behind the insulation and cause the base metal to corrode. A weld metal buildup can be performed from either side of the vessel wall, but in this instance, the insulation would be removed and a carbon steel buildup installed from the outside. 
By using the correct weld procedure, the buildup is considered part of the pressure boundary and the vessel restored. If the vessel was derated in order to continue operating, it can now be returned to normal service. And finally, structural weld overlay. This phrase was coined in the late 2000s as the temper bead repair of coke drums gained in popularity. Coke drums are cyclical vessels that require a post-weld heat treatment following any welded repair, but this alternative method was developed to avoid it. A temper bead weld procedure is also considered a weld metal buildup and allows this application to be used in the reinforcement of bulges and cirque seams where failures often occur. Alloy 625 is the weld wire of choice since the thermal expansion rate closely matches that of the drum's base material. The parameters of a temper bead weld procedure are very strict. Heat input is critical and extra monitoring should be performed to ensure the bounds of the procedure are not exceeded. We'll talk more about this later in the presentation. All these automated overlay applications, regardless of terminology, rely on the same fundamentals to ensure a good installation. In our next segment, we'll discuss these fundamentals and the equipment BHI uses to achieve them. They are weld prep, wire speed, travel speed, amps and volts, indexing or the number of beads in a vertical inch, and bead placement, which we control with programmable digital stops. Like any good weld job, every good overlay application begins with a sound clean surface free of cracks and contaminants. If the area to be welded presents with smooth, even wear, grit blasting the surface to white metal may be all that is required. However, for pitted surfaces or those with uneven wear and sharp edges, air arc gouging or grinding will be necessary. When air arc gouging is required, it is extremely important that only a trained crew be used. Untrained personnel can damage the vessel and make additional repairs necessary. After gouging, the surface is ground to eliminate any remaining ridges or sharp edges. It should be noted that the smoother the surface profile following weld prep, the smoother the finished surface profile of the overlay. Weld prep is only finished when the surface has been inspected and found to be free of defects. Wire, fire, and gas. Following the inspection, the automated equipment is installed and calibrated. When welding begins, the parameters established in our weld procedure for wire speed, travel speed, amperage, and voltage are followed. Regardless of the alloy selected, these parameters combine to install the overlay with the desired thickness and chemistry. In addition to the continuous hands-on monitoring performed by our weld operators, BHI equipment features fail-safes which help ensure a quality product. Specialized software is built in that locks in a parameter window. This reduces human error by limiting the amount of adjustment which can be made by the operator. Further, the weld system is programmed to shut down if travel stops or if the machine runs out of wire or gas. Not only do these features support the quality of the work, they also protect the vessel from damage. In addition to weld parameters is the importance of indexing or the number of beads counted in a vertical inch of overlay. 
not enough beads and the chemistry is incorrect, too many beads and the overlay is not bonded to the vessel wall. Automated equipment of the past and some still in use today rely on servo motors or motors that operate on timers to index the torch. Each of these motors are susceptible to heat and changes in load torque. At BHI, we use a micro stepper motor to index our torch. This motor is unaffected by the issues that plague other systems. Indexing cannot be overemphasized enough. Not only is it a key factor in bonding the overlay to the vessel wall, but it is the foundation for a smooth surface profile. An equally important function of our indexing is the profile of the heat affected zone. This is especially important in a structural weld overlay where a temper bead procedure is being used. Since the second layer of a temper bead overlay tempers the first, it's paramount that the fusion line of the heat affected zone is even. If the second layer fails to temper the first, unacceptable hardness readings will be present that could lead to crack initiation. This is a real concern for coke drums given their cyclical operation. Another feature unique to this system are the digitally programmable stops. Prior to striking an arc, the operator uses the control pendant to pre-program the barrier limits of the machine. This characteristic is important to the temper bead process since bead placement of the second layer requires pinpoint accuracy, but it also facilitates the use of multiple machines. Since there's no need for a mechanical stop to be attached to the track. In addition to our machine's built-in fail-safes, BHI is currently developing a data logging system to monitor our weld parameters in real time. Again, Structural weld overlays for coke drums will benefit most from this technology since heat input is critical. Currently, we measure and monitor our heat inputs at least one per shift on each machine. But this is a labor-intensive task that requires a technician to visit each machine and connect and disconnect the meter. We have successfully trialed our data logging system on four separate coke drum projects and the results have been impressive. Here's how it works. A data logger is connected to each machine and reads the joules or heat input in real time. In a matter of seconds, this data is sent via internet to a storage cloud where our engineering and quality control team can monitor the results. Our eventual goal is to provide our clients the ability to log into our cloud and view a dashboard of each individual machine during operation. This technology will offer reliability staff a transparent view of our weld process and reduce the exposure and headcount of quality control personnel. We're in the early stages of development, but this cloud-based technology could help us map our overlays and that information might one day help refiners monitor the health of their equipment in real time. Now that we've learned the basics, let's take a look at some examples of how weld overlay has been used to restore and extend the life of refinery equipment. In the coming slides, you'll see we've come a long way since the 1980s. Please note the extended reach of our index arm. This allows us to save track jumps and scaffold modifications on large, multi-level projects. Also note our checkerboard machine layout. We've found that when we have multiple machines on a single track, this approach allows us to grind our inseam tie-ins during welding. This configuration reduces distortion and increases production 
by allowing the machine to weld the end seams without stopping. These seams were previously butted up and then welded by hand. Again, the advantage of programmable stops. Now let's review some past projects to see how weld overlay is put to use. Main fractionator restoration in an Alki unit. During operation in a large Latin American refinery, the weld between the nozzle body and the flange failed on the main feed line. This resulted in a catastrophic fire, but luckily no one was seriously injured. After extinguishing the fire, a thorough inspection of the tower was performed and it was discovered that in addition to the failed 16-inch nozzle, the vessel wall at the elevation of this nozzle was below minimum thickness. BHI was asked to restore 210 square feet of wall thickness and replace the failed 16-inch nozzle as well as two other 6-inch nozzles. There were a couple of challenges that made this project special. Number one, the work area was approximately 190 feet in the air, and secondly, the two inch plus wall thickness meant that a post-weld heat treatment would be required. This vessel is in an area with a high wind load, so the client was concerned that the elevated temperatures required for post-weld heat treatment might lead to buckling or worse, collapse. Due to the tower's service in the alkylation unit, carbon steel was the buildup material of choice. To avoid post-weld heat treatment and the associated risk, BHI suggested a code-compliant carbon steel temper bead repair. Since there was a tray support ring in this area, BHI removed the old ring, installed the temper bead overlay, and then reinstalled a new ring at the same elevation. Concurrent with this overlay, the nozzles were installed, but rather than reinstall the same type nozzle that failed, BHI engineers suggested a solid, one-piece nozzle which would eliminate the failure point and prevent this accident from ever happening again. The carbon equivalent requirement specified for the nozzle's material made the material difficult to find. But by working with our global network of providers, we were able to source the material in Europe and have the nozzles fabricated in the United States. BHI Project Management supplied the execution plan for the project, which included coordinating the work of other contractors on the tower. Due to the complexity of the work, and the need to ensure community safety, the ASME authorized inspector made several visits to the job site. Upon completion, the authorized inspector performed his final review and with his approval, BHI stamped the vessel and the tower was returned to service as designed. A Texas Sphere Restoration. This Texas refiner processes high sulfur crudes. This sphere was scheduled to be condemned, but prior to doing so, BHI Energy received the call. After reviewing the inspection reports, BHI realized the sphere could be saved and designed a repair and execution plan for restoration. Before beginning, the automated buildup, our certified team of welders repaired 15 through wall perforations. A UT thickness inspection was then performed to define the weld area. With the scope identified, BHI grit blasted the area to white metal. Once the weld prep was complete and inspected, our automated systems were installed. Approximately 1,800 square feet of a one-layer carbon steel buildup was installed.
The extended reach of our index arm made this multi-level, out-of-position project possible. Several time-consuming scaffold modifications were avoided, which quickly and safely returned this sphere to operation, saving our client the cost of replacement and lost production. Coke Drum Rehabilitation, India Poor installation of almost 2,000 square feet of structural temper bead overlay by an unqualified European provider resulted in 134 linear feet of deep cracking, including a five foot long through wall crack in the drum that brought production to a halt. The extremely rough surface profile was a contributing factor to this cracking as stress risers were installed due to a lack of index control and properly trained machine operators. BHI began by completely removing the faulty overlay by air art gouging. Then the area was ground to remove any sharp edges and smooth the surface profile. After grinding, the weld area was inspected and two levels of automated equipment installed with nine machines on each level. During the Alloy 625 temper bead installation, the through wall crack was repaired. Evident quality and superior production informed the owner to increase our scope by 56%. This extra 1,100 square feet of overlay was originally planned for another on-site contractor, but after absorbing this extra footage and reimagining the scope with the resources available on-site, BHI was able to shave two weeks off the overall schedule, returning these drums to service ahead of plan. And now for some extras. We also use our MIG equipment for the repair and replacement of Coke drum skirt sections. There is essentially an automated solution for any position in any piece of pressurized equipment found in an oil refinery. High deposition rates and a wide range of weld wire choices let you select the material that best suits your erosion corrosion needs. Further, using automated equipment reduces human error and delivers consistent quality, making it possible to protect large areas of vessel wall in a short time frame. Weld overlay requires a dedicated, experienced team to plan, execute, and deliver a successful project. Our project management team has actual field experience having served as welders, superintendents, technicians, and quality control personnel. Decades of field experience informs our planning and the execution of the work. That means our no surprise execution plans are complete. BHI includes the third party inspections, heat treatment, and or scaffold modifications that will be necessary to complete the work. These detailed ITPs and execution plans generate a tremendous amount of information. We capture that data and feed it into our model for continuous improvement. Plan, perform, measure, and improve. When lessons learned and improvements are rolled into our next execution plan, we often see an overall increase in project quality and time on tools. The checkerboard approach was a product of this model. This simple change in machine layout didn't require major capital investment, but it's already benefiting our customers, and I'm sure there's more to come. Research and development also play a part in our continuous improvement program, and our engineers are currently researching how the surface profile of weld overlay influences compressive stress. This is a real concern for coke drums where stress risers and poor tempering can lead to through wall cracks. Our as welded profiles are superior and our aim is to learn and continually improve them 
through our research. In closing, the pressure on refiners to improve margins has led to an increase in the use of sour crudes in extended run times. Combine these factors with the pressures and high temperatures associated with normal operation and you've got a recipe for elevated corrosion rates. If you're responsible for the reliability or the asset integrity of pressure vessels, you already know that an automated weld metal overlay can be a great repair alternative. If you are currently planning a turnaround or considering the repair or replacement of your pressure equipment, BHI is happy to help you evaluate your repair options. It won't cost you anything and we might just save you some money. A final thought. We typically begin our presentation with a safety moment, but today I would like to close with one. You may have noticed in our slides that our employees are wearing air supplied welding hoods. When we were getting started back in the mid 1980s, face shields and paper masks were the industry norm. During this time, eye injuries like arc flash and foreign bodies in the eye were common. It seemed an almost daily occurrence that someone was going to the clinic to have their eye drilled. We also had no idea of all the respiratory hazards we were exposing ourselves to. We knew about the danger of weld fumes, but it was years before we ever heard the term hexavalent chrome. If anyone would like more information about how we use and manage this part of our safety program, please reach out to me. It's my opinion that these hoods have had an extremely positive impact on the health of our operators, and I'm happy to share what I know. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, please look for us on LinkedIn or check out our website, www.bhienergy.com. Thank you.